Our interest in water quality on Cape Cod grew out of our concern about elevated breast cancer incidence on Cape Cod. Um, based on our breast cancer and the environment study, we saw that women who had lived on the Cape for longer periods of time tended to be at increased risk of breast cancer. And this could not be explained by, um, by known risk factors such as in migration or age or mammography use. So it led us to explore potential environmental factors and drinking water was one of the, the pathways that we considered. We studied 20 public and 20 private drinking water wells on Cape Cod and we tested them for a range of emerging contaminants. Pharmaceuticals, personal care products, uh, perfluorinated chemicals, these are the non-stick and sting resistant chemicals, detergent breakdown products, about a hundred different chemicals. And what we found was quite a range in terms of the levels and the frequency with which these chemicals showed up in drinking water. So some of the wells we tested had none of these chemicals and very little sign of impact. Some had just a few chemicals and in some cases we saw up to 12 or 13 different chemicals in an individual well. Uh, the kinds of chemicals that we found included an antibiotic uh, used to treat urinary tract infections, an epilepsy medication, we found several perfluorinated chemicals um, in some cases, we do think these are coming from household wastewater, primarily from septic systems, although there are cases where there might be other sources that are leading to these getting into drinking water. So we did find a, a range of chemicals, and these are all at, at the parts per trillion level. Um, none of these chemicals are currently regulated in drinking water. Um, for several of the chemicals, we were able to find health-based guideline values. So these are sort of like a drinking water standard, but are not currently enforced. There are still reasons to be concerned, even though the levels seem to be very low. We know that pharmaceuticals are intended for specific people, for specific conditions, and we don't typically give medications to pregnant women or to children because of concerns about very sensitive developmental stages. We also know that pharmaceuticals can have health effects, uh, side effects, at lower levels than the therapeutic dose. Right now, uh, public drinking water suppliers are not required to do treatment to remove emerging contaminants. There are about 100 chemicals that are regulated currently. There are drinking water standards and public water suppliers are required to meet those standards. Some of the treatment that the water suppliers do will also remove some of these emerging contaminants and some of them will not be very effective. So for instance on the Cape a lot of the water suppliers adjust the pH of the water or they try to filter out some of the sand or manganese that might be getting into water and that's not really effective for removing emerging contaminants. Many public water suppliers disinfect their water. They have something like chlorine or ozone to remove pathogens. Uh, and depending on which chemical you're talking about there can be some removal following chlorination and especially ozonation. But it's important to note um, that we don't actually know what they're turning into. So when we say something got removed, we don't see it anymore as that specific chemical that we're looking for, but it's possible that it's been transformed to a slightly different chemical with unknown health effects. If you're on a public water supply, your water is tested for, uh, for regulated contaminants. If you're on a private well, then you're kind of on your own and, and it's a good idea to get your water tested for pathogens and for nitrate and to follow your water quality over time. And if you are concerned about um, the potential for emerging contaminants to be in your water, you can filter your tap water at home. A solid carbon block filter provides good treatment for organic contaminants um, as, do, as do those filter pitchers that have activated carbon. Um, boiling your water will not remove these contaminants. Um, and bottled water is a, is a question that I often get um, and you, you buy the bottles of water with the little mountain stream on it and it looks like it comes from a very pristine location and some of them may well come from pristine locations but some of them can just be tap water and maybe they've been treated and maybe they haven't been treated. Uh, bottled water is supposed to meet the same drinking water standards that public water supplies are supposed to meet but there's far less testing and enforcement. Furthermore, bottled water sits in plastic for extended periods of time. So we don't necessarily recommend a switch to bottled water. So the type of research that we do is very expensive. The chemical analyses on our drinking water samples cost almost $2,000 a sample because we, it requires very specialized equipment to do these types of measurements at the parts per trillion level that we're talking about. Um, 
we do apply for and receive funding from national funding organizations such as National Institutes of Health or National Science Foundation, but this funding is very difficult to come by and sometimes we've gotten feedback that the, res the, the kinds of things that we'd like to study are really more of a local issue and so it will, it's really important for us to also receive funding from, from the state recognizing that the work that we're doing really is contributing to the, our knowledge and to the discussion right now about um, wastewater management and drinking water protection. Massachusetts Breast Cancer Coalition is an organization dedicated to preventing environmental causes of breast cancer through community education, research advocacy, and changes to public policy. For more information, please visit nbcc.org or silentspring.org. Thank you.